First of all, I want to thank everybody for being here. I know we have some guests, and we hope that this will be a meaningful service to you today. I'm just guessing, but I think that we've probably got around 290, something like that, Wayne. So what that means is, folks, is that we need to take a picture and show you where the empty spots are up front so some of you can go ahead and adjust your uh, place of sitting now. Uh, I, I just have a lot of confidence <clears throat> that you will go out of your way to make sure that our guests have a, a place to sit, that you won't be selfish. I mean, we're, we're talking about uh, serving others. Well, you can serve others by making sure that they have a place to sit and to sit with their family. You know, it, it was a tough decision for the elders. We, we want to grow. Why do we want to grow? To glorify God, to save souls. Having two services allowed us to have enough room that everybody would have a place to sit. Uh, and, and allow us for, to grow. Going back to one service, there's a lot of benefits and pluses uh, involved in that. But we've got to always remember that having one service also has its drawbacks because to be honest, nobody here wants to have to spend another million or two million dollars for a new auditorium. It just doesn't make sense when there's so many needs in this world. And that's probably a, a fairly conservative estimate on the cost of a new auditorium. So to make the best use of this auditorium, every time you come in the door, don't just think about yourself. Think about others. Think about how you can make room for them, make them feel welcome, and uh, just, just be a servant in your heart and, and in your actions as well. And I want to commend this church. This is the second time that we've had uh, two, gone to two services. And both times, people could not have been more agreeable. I'm not saying there wasn't some that were unhappy about it. There always will be. But as a general rule, this congregation has responded with a Christ-like attitude, with a spirit of unity that the Lord would love and be pleased with. And, and I just want to take the time to thank you for doing that because we're experimenting. There's no point in you know trying to do the same thing the same way all the time if it's not working. We we want to we want to try things that are scriptural and things that are good in order to bring glory to God. Amen. And and you good folks, you good folks have have done marvelously, wonderfully, and I appreciate it. Now the first sermon of the year is always a nerve-wracking one for me, and this one is no different. And when we get through with it, you're going to say, well, Randy didn't prepare a sermon. Actually, <laughs> actually, I spent a lot of time, uh, probably a month, thinking about what I was going to say. And my words just kept getting in the way, and I kept thinking of something that I thought we needed to, to be reminded of, we need to share. Now what they're going to do is they're going to dim the lights, and uh, Matt, we do want the volume on the video. Now here's, here's what's probably going to happen. Uh, the video that I have will probably not play, and so I have a four minute sermon, uh, and you will feel extremely blessed. But don't get used to that, don't get used to that. It, it, uh, Brevity of sermons is not my strong suit. Now, we do want the volume with this. If you can't see this, and hopefully they make it full screen, if you can't see this, <clears throat> I know it's uncomfortable, but some of you <clears throat> maybe can turn and watch it on the back. This is a service that took place at the Park Plaza uh, Church of Christ, uh, and it's people telling their stories and it may not move you in the way that it does me, but it moves me. And after we get through, and it's rather lengthy, uh, but after we get through, I'll have a few comments. So go ahead and... I don't know, can you see that? You can turn the volume up too. Thank you. 
<laughs> That's the end. As most of you know, I, there's a few things that uh, get to me or choke me up but whenever you're talking about children with, and disabilities. It, it tears me all to pieces. Uh, we gather here made up of different age groups, different backgrounds. There are some people here in our midst that have always lived well-ordered lives and haven't made major mistakes and haven't sinned to the level of others. And I congratulate all of you who have always tried to faithfully follow Jesus Christ and, and keep His teachings and thank you for uh, the, the path that you've made for us to follow, the example. Uh, most of us don't fall into that category and we admire those of you who've always tried to follow Christ and haven't let sin on any major level invade your life. Uh, we think, think, and we need more people like that. I would caution you if you fall into that category of somebody that's always followed Christ and, and really haven't blown it in life to, to never allow yourself to be filled with self-righteousness or to look down your nose on other people. And you always ought to live with this, this little saying, there but by the grace of God go I. Because it could have happened to you, you could have fallen, you could have messed up like the rest of us. But I, I do, I'm, I'm being ser serious when I say this. There are those people among us who have just always done such a remarkable job. And we thank you for your example. And, and we lift you up. But then there's the rest of us who haven't always tried to live according to the teachings of Jesus. Some of us, some of us were raised in church and we went astray like the prodigal son and absolutely abandoned the father, brought sin and reproach upon herself and upon the church. Some of us, I've uh, been like the prodigal son, uh, even while attending church faithfully, which seems to be a, a, a heightened level of sin, uh, in my judgment. But living as if Christ wasn't real, and living as if all the words coming out of our mouths and songs really didn't mean anything to her heart. We didn't mean to be uh, that cold-hearted, but nevertheless, that's what happened. And some of us who uh, have fallen and sinned over the years as Christians and, and let sin come into our lives and the corruption and the pain that comes with it, we, uh, we've tried to rise above it, but there's always roosters crowing if you don't understand a biblical reference. There's always roosters crowing reminding us of our failures. And then there are those among us who may be good people, maybe not. Maybe you're here because somebody's making you be here, but you haven't submitted to Jesus. It is our prayer. It is our prayer that you do so because here's what we all have in common. We all need a Savior. And we all need His grace. In Jesus' earthly ministry, we don't know all that He did. That's what John says. But we know that He raised a little girl from the dead. I, I, I can't imagine the joy the parents must have felt when that happened, but the little girl had just died. And Jesus goes in and He speaks to her and says, Arise, and here's a little girl that has just died and she raises up. And then there's a time where Jesus is... Uh, oh, by the way, I've got to watch what I'm doing. They tell me I walk off screen, which should be considered a blessing, but <laughs> they hadn't marked me yet, so I don't know how far I can go. Uh, Jesus... Jesus uh, is coming into a town, and on the way out of town, 
there is a funeral procession and there's a young man that had died and had been dead and they buried the people the same day they died in that part of the world. But he'd been dead long enough that they had managed to have, you know, to prepare the body and and choose the place where he's to be buried and probably to go dig the grave and everything. So he'd been dead a little while, a young man. And, and they're taking him out, and Jesus stops the funeral procession and, and raises the man from the dead. And then, of course, there's Lazarus, who had been dead. You know, I'm, I'm assuming he's in his, you know, around 30 or maybe a little bit older than that. Anyway, he'd been dead long enough that his family didn't want to go through the disgrace and the humiliation and the painful thought, thought of, of dealing with what's happening to your dead brother, the Latin Mary Martha's brother. Uh, when they open that grave up and his body is decomposing, so he'd been there that long. So you have a little girl, you have a young man, and then you have, we'll say, a middle-aged man, and they all got one thing in common. They were all dead. And dead is dead. And it doesn't matter how big your sin was, or how often your sin was, dead is dead. And unless you're in Jesus Christ, you are dead in trespasses and sin. And all of us at one time were dead because of our trespasses and sin. So we all have something in common. We all need a Savior. We all need His grace. Amen. We also need each other. There's not a person here that has not been blessed by other people. I know at times you feel like you've been cursed by other people, and that's true. But the truth of the matter is, is God never intended us to just go around and preach the gospel and leave people, you know, baptize them and then leave them. God had a plan before the world was ever made that the people that trusted in Him would come together as a family and help each other out. And so wherever the gospel is to be preached, there is the church to be established and the people are to come together and encourage one another and warn one another and help one another out and to be helped. We all need each other. And we got to remember that we need to be thinking about helping others because in the passage this wonderful passage, this judgment scene, the last great judgment, all of humanity present. There are going to be people there that are going to be saved. There are people there that are going to be lost. And obviously we want to be in that saved category. We want to be God's people. And what we find out in Matthew 25 is that God's people... Help others. It says that when people are thirsty, you give them a drink. It says that when people are hungry, you give them some clothes. I mean food. You give When they're naked, you give them clothes. When they're in prison, you visit them. When they're sick, you visit them. You take care of them. As a stranger that has no place to stay, you show hospitality. There's all of these things. It's right there in the text. And so to be God's people, we're to help others. That also means that we use our resources such as time. Oh, we're a busy bunch, aren't we? I'm afraid the God of America is money followed by the God of busyness. We're so busy. We're so busy, in fact, that we don't have time to do a lot of things that we need to be doing, like spending time with the family and taking care of other people, and everything in the world seems to get in the way of going to church now. We're just worshiping the God of busy all the time. One of the resources that God expects us to use to, be, to minister under the least of these is time, because it takes time to do these things. And it takes a little effort because you've got to fix food or buy food or something to feed the hungry. And you've got to 
Take time out of your busy schedule to go visit the sick or those people that are in prison and you got to kind of put yourself out there when strangers need to have a place to stay. That takes money, that takes time, that takes resources, that takes time to figure out what's the safest and best thing to do for you and them. So God's people help others and God's people use their resources to help others. And the wonderful thing and in the text is that God's people are surprised at how much good a little good does. Lord, we strove through life and we, we tried to be good, but when did we ever see you hungry? When did we ever see you? When did we ever see you in prison? When did we ever? And, and, and the reply is, whenever you've done it under the one of the least of these. And we're like, wow, that time that I spoke a word of encouragement to a teenager who was on the wrong path, that really mattered? Yeah, really, really mattered. Or well, that time that you... You, you stopped and you bought a hamburger for a homeless person. Now, did, that, did that change anything? It got Jesus' attention. And so God's people, at the end of our journey, we're going to find out that kind deeds, acts of service, made a big difference. Because whoever we did it to or did it for, it was just like doing it to Jesus. And so let's be servants of God. So on the last day, we can hear the greatest words that will ever be spoken to us. Well done, good and faithful servants. Amen. Amen. You will never receive a higher honor than that. If you need to respond to the invitation, I invite you to do so as we stand and sing together. <clears throat>